Hi everyone, it's Jim from Pure Wave Audio and today we're going to be looking at a RV garage conversion into a multi-room home studio. We have the Volga booth that we're running on. Uh, we're do, doing Ethernet and uh, analog cables. We're also doing some CCTV that we'll have up in the corner. Uh, we're also going to be blowing this wall out a little bit bigger and doing a 45 over here, which would be cool. Uh, this is the drum room, which has a window. Then there's a live room, and then there's a control room. In this room, we're doing only Ethernet because we're using the uh, merging horror system. Coming through. Good. So over here, we're going to have uh, like a hi-fi listening room built into the live room. And uh, doing our cables, we got CCTV, we got CC monitors. Um, we got SDI cables for floor cameras. This is the console that we'll be uh, putting in for a S6 system. And this is all our doors and windows. And we got doors over there you can see on the ground. These are all special studio doors. And uh, all special studio windows that are going in. And then we got a bunch of home runs. Um, so it's getting pretty crazy. But... Uh, it's looking pretty good. All the air conditioning will be floating off the ceiling. It's looking good. So now that you have a little overview of where we are in the project, I want to kind of show you where we are starting from. So this is a RV garage, like a mobile home garage that of course is tall and long and slender, if you will and we're converting that into a studio. Now, normally this was just gonna be about two rooms and kind of halfway through the design, the owner decided, you know what? I wanna have a separate control room. I want a separate live room. I want a separate drum room. I even wanna have a little small vocal booth because we have this extra room with load bearing walls we can't really do much with. So we're kind of stuck with this small room, uh, which will be good during live tracking just to to have isolation, so that's that's fine. Uh, but that small room does have some, you know, compromises because because of the volume of that room, it's going to create certain frequency issues. But in any case, the isolation is better than bleeding into other things. The unique thing about this design is the live room where guitar and bass would be living in is also going to dual as a hi-fi aptness listening room. So it gets kind of complicated because the amount of wiring and the different things that you're going to do to create that room gets pretty intense. And then you're using this multi-purpose where you have a screen coming down and, you know, all these designs, or I should, I should say functionality design specs that, that the client wants would be great if we were starting from scratch. But since we're not starting from scratch and we're kind of stuck with, you know, the existing outside, you know, walls, if you will, this design has a lot of compromises. So as you can see here in this picture, uh, this is actually the original garage door where the tall RV would be coming through. This is going away and we will be putting a window in that in place of that. And so we're putting up a cinder block to uh, fill that all in. This area is actually going to end up being the control room. And then there will be a wall right in front of us, what we're looking at. And then the next area you'll be looking at is we're standing in the live room. And then we're looking at that little window there. That's going to be the drum room. And so now we're in the drum room and you can see that this is all cinder block on the outside. And then there's kind of a facade wall here that, you know, we're kind of doing a home homegrown version, but we're going to rip all this out and redo it to specs. And then in that drum room is another roll up garage door, which is kind of weird because it's a smaller one. Uh, that's going away. We're putting some studio doors in. And then right behind that chair, behind the back of the chair, 
Uh, that is a load-bearing wall on the left side of it going towards a video monitor. And on the right side, we're going to blow that out and we're going to turn that into a vocal room. That used to be like an air compressor room or something, some kind of machine room back there. Uh, so we're going to turn that into a little vocal booth, which is what you saw when I did the little tour through. So one of the things you have to keep in mind when you're doing acoustic installations is the wall thickness becomes really thick because of all the layers and barriers that you're putting in it. And with this situation, you can see that we have a special box that ratches out. Uh, so depending on how thick it is, you could actually screw this in or out of the wall to get to the right length. And these are a must have when you're doing multiple layers. And we have a little bit of space, not much, but keep in mind that the mineral fiber that we're putting in here is only two inches thick and you have about three or four inches before you hit the existing wall. Now, the reason that we didn't decide to put a lot of airspace here is because the because it was an RV garage, it's already slender to begin with. And so we don't want to take up all the space and all of a sudden, hey, look, we have this five foot <laughs> wide room because we decided to put too much isolation in it. And so there, there's a lot of compromises that we have to do. Now, on the other side of this is a garage. So we're not really worried about the sound going too far into there. And believe me, this thing's going to be pretty soundproof, even though we're compromising a little bit. We'll have a little bit of airspace. We'll have the mineral fiber in here. And besides the garage wall, all the other walls are cinder block. Now, they're not full filled with concrete cinder block, but they are cinder block. So we do have some mass that's, you know, helping us isolate the base. And, you know, my biggest issues is not really about bothering the neighbors, which is, you know, usually your number one issue. We're in the middle of nowhere with this, with this build. What my issue is, is F-16 jets flying over by, uh, A-10 jets flying over by, because I don't want to say we're exactly in a flight pattern. We do have a heavy military base town, if you will. And, you know, there are flybys that go by every once in a while. You know, if an F-16 jet flies over your house, you're not going to stop the sound from permeating through no matter how much isolation you have, unless you have a $10 million building. But we definitely want to isolate as much as possible to where maybe there's just a 40 hertz rumble or something that goes by and as much mass as we can put into the walls to do that within reason. That go. Another thing about this build is, you know, it's not a $10 million build. So we're not running everything through conduit and we're going to be able to chase lines later and all the kind of things, you know, none of this is being CAD drawn out to the sense that it's, you know, a multi-million dollar build. This is a home studio. Uh, however, I will say that the client really wants a lot of, I don't want to call it overkill, but a lot of redundancy, a lot of stuff that honestly the space is just not, there's not enough space to build for it. And he wants to put it in anyways. And so there are some, what I'll say, compromises that I have to deal with because the client wants certain things that I don't believe are, you know, necessary to put in the build, but it's what he wants. And so we're going to do with that. Again, if we were building this from scratch, it'd be a different, different, you know, told totally different animal. We could do whatever he wants. We have the space for it. Well, if you want to do that, we should add five feet to this wall here. You know, all these things could be flushed out in the design. But since we're kind of popping into kind of a weird space to begin with, those type of things, you know, just make it harder to actually do. So now we're going back to a shot of the build out of the two by fours and such. And the shot that we're taking from now is where you saw the original RV garage door opening, which is now the control room. So we're in the control room and we're looking through the control room window. And to the left is where the hi-fi gear will be shooting to the right. And then behind that person in the middle is the drum room window then the drums, and then behind that is a vocal booth. And we will have a door in the back right where the uh, roll-up door was, but it will now be a regular door that's a studio door, isolated. Now, what you're seeing here is all the special studio doors, studio windows, a special custom console that was built for the S6 that's going in. And 
again, here's one of these things where this S6 console was built with the S6 in mind. And it's honestly, it's too big for the room, but this is something that the client wants. So we're putting it in the room and literally that console is going to be right up to the door edge and it's going to go probably mostly almost all, all the way over to the wall, which means the racks need to come further back. And, you know, there's all these little compromises that are going on where if I was given, I don't want to say carte blanche, but to design the studio, I would design it totally different, a little bit more ergonomic. I would make the space work the best that space would be, but I'm not in that position to do that. So, you know, it is what it is. So here's without the uh, control room and the drum wall, isolation walls with the windows in them. And you can now start to see that cavity off to the left side, um, which will have the hi-fi center. And then somewhere around where the ceiling uh, two by fours end is where a screen would like electronically lower down and you'd be able to watch you know, your movies or you know shows and Atmos audio. Now, along with that, the control room is going to be able to mix Atmos audio. So we have two actual rooms with full Atmos speakers in it, and it's going to be uh, four in the ceiling, four in the surround, and then your left, right, and probably center. And so that's true for two separate rooms. So as I'm explaining this, you could kind of see that Man, that's a lot of stuff, a lot of infrastructure, a lot of cabling, a lot of duality. Um, it's just a lot. And so, but it is what it is. So one of the things that we decide to do, because right now all they have is a split little tiny unit that is up on the ceiling for air conditioning. Well, those are super noisy and hard to record and they're isolated to the one room so you'd have to have multiple units so we decided that we're going to put a real air conditioner in which made us lower the ceiling about a foot and a half so we could get our air conditioning runs across the whole building now one of the issues with that is you have to look at making sure that you're not putting in a run that goes to the live room and to the control room and then you got an instant hole you just put where the sound goes through from one room to the other you have to do home runs for all the air conditionings and that way everything will run back to the home and not be able to bounce around 180 degrees and come back to the other room plus these are all insulated ducts they'll probably have some curves and stuff in them too so um that if there is any kind of bleed of sound, it's going to get eaten up in whatever insulation is inside of those ducts and the way that they're run and, and turned around. So there's no just direct reflection or, or hole or pathway from one room to the other. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm kind of helping out, figure out where the speakers are going to be for the Atmos ceiling speakers, where they're going to be with respect to the acoustics that we're putting in because all the bass traps come a certain space off the wall. And then from there, we have to know where the acoustics are going and we have to get around the speakers and then we have to get around the lights. And so there's just, you know, with all the, like the windows and we added the extra window in the back to the outside of the building, when you start adding all the windows and then you got four speakers uh, somewhere around, you know, four or five feet tall uh, going around, then you have four in the ceiling and then you have all the lights and then you have the air conditioning vents. There's no room for acoustics anymore. You just filled up the whole, the whole ceiling and walls with speakers and lights and such. So this is probably the most difficult install I've ever done. And it keeps morphing, which is tough. Also, I like to design, I like to buy and I like to implement and just bam, 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 and everything's figured out. And this one's kind of been morphing and changing as we go, um, you know, from the client. And uh, that's been very difficult for me to deal with because that's just not how I do things personally. Um, but I think at the end of the day, uh, the client's going to be really happy. They'll have exactly what they want. Obviously, there's going to be some compromises. Uh, but the client's happy with those compromises because he's choosing to do those certain things. Um, and, uh, you know, 
I think it's going to really work out and be really nice uh, once we get to the end. So where it stands right now is uh, all the wood is in for building the walls. And I think they're shimming in the doors as we speak, which I'll do an update on that. And then later on, they're going to start putting up all the uh, mineral fiber and the RC8 channels and then start doing drywalling. And so in the meantime, I've been just ordering equipment and getting things in, especially with some of the delays that's, you know, the shipping delays that are out there, um, you know, at this moment in time, just trying to make sure we get things in. So there's no delays in actually setting up the studio. Um, now, one of the things that the client wants to do is like, well, you know, I'd like to get the control room up first and then, you know, we'll worry about the other rooms. And it's like, okay, I understand you have a priority there, but there's drywall dust there. It will get into everything. So let's finish the drywall. Let's get the whole place painted. Let's get, you know, whatever flooring things going on finished. And then we don't want to put any consoles or anything in the way because now I can't get my ladder to get the acoustics up. Right. So I understand the concerns of being priority, a certain room or whatever, but at the end of the day, penny wise, pound foolish, you really need to finish all the drywall finish all the paint, finish all the flooring, get all the acoustics up and the speakers installed and everything that's in the walls, if you will, done. And then from there, if you don't want to put mics out and you don't want to do stuff in the live room or the drum room or any of that stuff, and you just want to get the control room grown, great. But you're not going to get that, that drywall dust will get into everything and it will mess your audio up. And it, it's just really bad. So there's certain things that you have to do in a certain way. And we're just going to try to keep on task to make sure that that happens for this install. So I'll give you an update as it goes, hopefully, and uh, we'll see this thing, how it, how it flushes out towards the end. Appreciate it and have a great day. Building on top of the first course, the Studio Edge Pro audio recording series called Studio Concepts, Gear, and the Physics of Sound, Jim Pavet's next course, Planning a Studio, demystifies the planning process and teaches you how to get your studio designed and built. You see how to define your goals, plan your budget, and zero in on your musical philosophy so that your new studio will be in sync with your vision. It will also teach you about acoustics, including absorption, diffusion, NRC ratings, and room modes. Once you have these in place, the Constructing and Fine-Tuning Your Studio course teaches you how to construct your studio, including floating floors, walls, and ceilings, and how to balance your acoustic treatment to get proper sounding rooms. Power, grounding, and HVAC systems are also discussed. A guest appearance from renowned acoustician Gavin Haverstick discusses the final results of a control room tuning and why having your rooms tuned is important. In the case study Home Studio Edition course, you get to join Jim Pavette as he consults with the owner and the construction team as they all work together to build a Home Studio Edition. Real interviews and consulting with the contractor and owner bring all the theory to life and reveal some trials and tribulations of building a studio. This five-star rated three-pack course is a necessity to having a properly built studio. Get it now at thestudioedge.com.